All right, kids, here comes section 8.3, applying accumulation and integrals. And the big deal is when you integrate a rate, you get net change. So if you integrate a rate of change, you get net change. Remember, integrals give you the net, the difference between above the x-axis and below the x-axis, you, you subtract them. So we covered it in unit 6. We're going to use it now with application problems. These are all word type problems. And you will see word type problems on the AP exam, so it's good for you to have a uh, grasp of them. Let's see if we can decipher this and answer these examples first. A storm was, has washed away sand from a beach, causing the edge of the water to get closer to a nearby road. The rate at which the distance between the road and the edge of the water was decreasing during the storm, as modeled by e to the negative sine of t feet per hour, t hours from the storm, uh, after the storm began. The edge of the water was 200 feet from the road when the storm began. That's an initial position right there, right? They're telling you when the storm began that it was 200 feet from the road. That's going to be important. If the storm lasted four hours, that's important. How far is the water from the road after the storm? Well, you know where it started. It started 200 feet from the road, right? That was the initial position um, of the sand. And then the storm washed away, so minus, it washed away over a four hour period at a rate of r of t dt. Well, guess what? That's it. Don't go harder than it has to be. So you go to your handy dandy calculator. These are all normally calculator questions. And you go to your calculator and you put that in, your r of t is e to the negative sine of t. You could also put that here instead of the r of t, they're interchangeable. Um, and then you calculate it out and you get 196.937 feet. These usually have units with them, so if there are units, you want to make sure you put units. All right, there's the first one. It says, um, yeah, we answered the question. You always want to go back and make sure you've answered the question that they're asking. Number two, a store. These are classic. I remember uh, the last couple of exams, they had people coming in and out of an amusement park, and you had to figure out, calculate a lot of things about that. They had bananas. People were at the supermarket, and the guy was putting bananas out, and people were taking the bananas uh, to purchase them. And so like the exchange of back and forth like that uh, oftentimes comes up on an AP exam. So a store is having a five hour sale. Okay, it's having a five hour sale. The rate at which shoppers enter the store T hours after the sale begin, begins is modeled by the function E of T, which is measured as shoppers per hour. When the sale starts, there are 70 shoppers in the store. What's that telling you? Don't jump up and down yet. It's telling you the initial value. 70 is when they are, when it starts. Write, but do not solve, an equation involving an integral to find the time x when the number of shoppers in the store is 200. Assume no one leaves the store during this time. Well, this initial thing is always where you start, right? When the sale starts, there's 70 shoppers, shoppers right? I've got 70 shoppers plus I have whoever else enters. Now they're entering and the question is find the time x. Well remember up here this was 0 to 4 hours, the amount of hours on your storm. This one's going to be 0 to x because you don't know what that number is. You, you're looking for what that value is. What's the function? Well the function is called e of t. Let's see. Write but do not solve an equation involving an integral to find the time x when the number of shoppers in the store is 200. When does this equal 200? That's it. You're done. Because they only wanted you to set up the equation. They did not ask you to solve it. And so there you go. That's it. They could also give you one in a table form. That's the next one here. Water is pumped into a tank at a rate modeled by R of T, liters per hour, where R is uh, differentiable and, de and decreasing 
on zero to eight seconds of the seconds no hours uh, selected values of RT are shown in the table below at time t equals zero there are five thousand liters again what are they telling me t equals zero there's five thousand liters um, of water in the tank all right so got your chart what does zero to eight what does this integral represent and so this would be, this is your time, so over eight hours, the amount, this would be the amount of water pumped in into the tank over eight hours. All right, then it says, okay, well now estimate it using a left Riemann sum. Do you remember how to do that off a chart? So I'm looking at a left Riemann sum for this, which means left, I keep the left, I'm not going to use the right. And then I'm going to use the um, distance between these things, like this one is a distance of 1, this one's a distance of 2, this one's a uh, distance of 3, this one's a distance of 2. And so I've got to keep an eye on that because it's not consistent this time. So I can't just do a flat out, you know, two times all the different values on the table. This one is going to be 1 times 3,000 for the first rectangle. Second rectangle is going to be 2 times 2,500. 2, the length of the rect, uh, the width of the rectangle times this left side. The third one's going to be 3 times 2,100. And the last one is 2 times 1,500. I don't use the 1,000. And so I go and I multiply them out. I add them all up. And I get 17,300. Got to think about what my units are. It is liters. That's how many liters you've got going on. Based on this estimate, how many liters of water are in the tank after eight hours? Well, thinking about it, it's had an initial value of 5,000, so it started with 5,000, and then water's being pumped into the tank. I have after, five, after eight hours, that's my 17,300 number. And so when I add them up, I get 22,300 liters. Okay, one more example problem. <laughs> Same scenario, but this time the table of values represents W of T, the numbers of liters of water in the tank at a given time measured in hours. So this time it says W prime of T. What does the integral of W prime of T represent? And so that represents the amount of water pumped into the tank. Do you know why that is? And the answer is because if you take the integral of a derivative, you get the function. Right? So you're going you're going backwards and getting the function. So, and that's what you've got here. You've got what the function is. So the derivative, if I'm taking the integral of the derivative, then I'm back to what the function is. And the function is talking about how much water is pumped into the tank. So find 0 to 8. Well, that would be if I take the integral of w of t, I'm at w of t. If I take the integral of w prime of t, I'm at wt. That would be the same thing as just taking, well, what's w of 8 minus w of 0? And I get 22,000, right, from my, t from my values here, 22,000. Uh, 0 is 5,000. And so I subtract them, and I get 17,000 liters. So they just wanted to make the point of, don't forget, this is the fundamental theorem of calculus here, where you've got the integral of a derivative gives you the original function. Okay? All right, the first tricky practice problem that I saw was number three, so we're going to look at that, Mr. Tom Sawyer.
Look at them putting some English into calculus. Tom Sawyer's painting a fence at a rate of 200 minus 4t square feet per hour, where t is the number of hours since he started painting. If the fence is 800 square feet, how long will it take him to finish painting the fence? Round your answer to the nearest minute. Here's the issue with this one and the reason why I picked it. See this, the nearest minute? What's your function in? Whoa, Nelly, we've got some conversions that we need to do. But that's not going to happen until the end. So at the very end of this, we're going to convert because our answer is going to be in hours and we need to get it into minutes. So we're going to put that on hold. We'll figure out how many hours it is and then we can um, convert that to minutes, which is what they're asking me for. All right, so here's how I'm going to set this one up. How long will it take him? Well, the integral going from zero when he started to some hour, I don't know, I'm looking for that, is going to be what the function was, 200 minus 4t dt. And how much fencing does he have to, to um, complete? 800. How long if he follows this function, will it take him to paint a fence that's 800 square feet? All right, so let's integrate first. So if I integrate, I have 200t minus 4t squared over 2 going from 0 to x. I'm going to make it prettier one more time before I plug in. 200t minus 2t squared going from, actually I should be putting x, oh, no, t's, I'm oh, good, t's, uh, going from 0 to x. Well, now I'm going to plug the x in. If I plug the x in, I've got 200x minus 2x squared minus, if I plug a 0 in, I get 0. And this equals 800. I should be keeping that along there. Equals 800, equals 800. So here's where I'm at now. I have um, I'm going to just rearrange things slightly. Negative 2x squared plus 200x minus 800 equals 0. And then I'm going to factor out a negative 2. Negative 2x squared minus 100x uh, plus 400 equals 0. And then the hope is that that thing factors. And guess what? It doesn't. And so what do you do? You say, oh no, I can't factor that. I could quadratic formula that, but that's not a whole lot better, is it? What we have in our handy dandy lovely calculator is the solve button. You go to the solve button in your calculator. You type in x squared. Again, again this negative 2 on the outside, if I set that equal to 0, it get, it's, it's undefined. Negative 2 can't equal 0, so really you're ignoring that. You're just taking x squared minus 100x plus 400 equals 0, comma x in your solve feature, and you end up with an x value that is 4.174, and we said that's going to be hours. The question wants it in minutes. What do you do? All right, well, you times it by 60 minutes and you get a final answer in their terms of what they wanted of 250 minutes. I don't know why that they did that to you and changed up the units. Probably just kind of making sure you're paying attention. But that was the first one that I saw that might cause a little grief. All right, here's let's try number six is next on my list. Construction workers are pouring concrete at a rate modeled by C of T measured in cubic feet per minute and T is measured in minutes since the start of the workday. When the day begins, here you go, here's your initial. When the day begins, there are 60 cubic feet of concrete that's been poured from the day before. Write, but do not solve, an equation involving the integral to find the time X when the amount of concrete poured has reached a total of 100 cubic feet. I don't think this is any different than some of the other ones that we've done. Just kind of want to give you another reminder of how this works. It starts with 60 cubic feet and I'm adding to it, but I don't know how many hours it's going to take, 0 to x, 
my function is c of t dt, and I want to know when it's reached a total of 100 cubic feet. There it is. You're just setting it up. You are not solving it. The more you see these, the easier they are. There you go, number six. Number nine is next. Number nine has many parts. Kind of reminds me of the problem we did earlier uh, on the examples there, but the rate of decay this time in, a, in grams per minute of a radioactive substance is, is a differentiable, uh, meaning continuous, decreasing function or of time t in years. The table below shows the decay rate of the substance uh, if the substance has 3,000 grams as recorded every four hours. Oh, they were nice to us. Four hours. They gave us um, um, the same width for every single rectangle. So, using correct units, interpret the meaning of 0 to 12, uh, the integral of r of t in the context of this problem. And that would be the number of grams that have decayed, right, because it's a decaying situation, of a radioactive substance over the first How long? 12, and we're in years. How many grams of the substance has decayed over the first 12 years? Zero to 12. Okay, so this is where I thought this might be a little bit more challenging than the one we saw in the example. Use a midpoint Riemann sum with three sub-intervals to approximate the integral from zero to 24. Show the computations and indicate your units of measure. Well, if I have a Riemann sum on this, and I'm looking at this particular graph, I have my first one, they, have, they want three. They have to be evenly uh, widthed, is that a word? The next one goes eight to 16, the last one goes to 24. So I've got three, where am I? Three subintervals, there you go. There are my three subintervals. Now what I'm doing though, is I'm going to take those subintervals and I have to take the width times the midpoint plus the width, they all have the same width, 8 to 16, times the midpoint of that plus 8 times the width, uh, the, that's the width, 16 to 24, times the midpoint of that guy. So if I'm looking at the midpoints, well the midpoint between 0 and 8 is 4, I'm using 95. Between 8 and 16, the midpoint's 12, I'm using 80. The midpoint between 16 and 24 is 20, I'm using 65. They are the numbers that go into my blank spots here. 95, 80, 65. Add them up and you get a, a 1920. What is that? Well, if I have years times grams per year, I end up with grams. And then part C, using your answer for, from part B, how much of the radioactive substance is left after 24 years? Well, how much did you start with? Oh, 3,000 grams. 3,000 grams is what I started with. And I'm taking away the 1,920 that decayed off of it, and I end up with an answer of 1,080 grams. So there's one with a midpoint Riemann sum that I didn't know if you remembered those. It's good to refresh your memory on that. Here comes the last one. The last one, now this is a classic AP question, and it's one that I was going to just leave for you to do on your own, but I figured I might as well go through the steps with you because, like I said, it's a classic question. And it has four parts. It's a big guy. He's a calculator active, um, talking about wild boars. While boars enter a community in Georgia at a rate modeled by the function e of t, the boars leave the community at a rate modeled by l of t, so they're entering e, leaving l, 
Uh, both E of T and L of T are measured in bore per year, and T is measured in years since 2010 being the zero year. So, again, this is kind of like what I was talking about earlier, people entering an amusement park, leaving an amusement park. You know, this is a classic kind of question. So how many bores enter the community over a six-year period from 2010 to 2016? And so you say, well, uh, 2010 is my zero year. 16 would be six years later. My function is E of T. How many have entered the community? And so I go to my handy-dandy calculator. I'm not going to take time to, to actually put these in for you, but you can do this. If you take the integral of 200 plus 40 sine of pi t over 6, going from 0 to 6, you get an answer of 1,352.7887 bores. So we usually round up. So we're going to say uh, 1,353 bores have entered that community. All right, second one, B. What is the average number of boars that leave the community per year over the six-year period? Well, leaving, first of all, I see this word average. So I need to do average value that we learned previously. So that's 1 over 6 minus 0, the integral going from 0 to 6 that leave the community. So L of t this time, dt. So just clean it up a little bit before you put it in the calculator. 1 sixth, 0 to 6 of L of t dt. Again, go to your calculator. Calculate it out. You end up with 37.257 or 38 uh, bores per year. Okay, so the average number of bores that leave the community. Always go back and make sure you've answered the question that they're actually asking for. Does it make sense? Does your answer kind of make it, is it, is it logically correct? All right, here comes the next one, C. This one's a little harder. At what time t, going between 0 and 8, is the greatest number of bores in the community? So the greatest number of bores in the community would be the like a maximum, right? Now, this is going to pull in a whole lot of different things that you have learned over the time. So the number of bores gained or lost I'm going to call A of T, the amount of bores I've got, not acceleration. This is A of T talking about uh, the number of bores, either gained or lost. You don't know how much you've got going, going on here, right? You don't know whether it's going to be a positive outcome or, an, or a negative outcome. More than likely positive because you've got the 1,300 bores there. Now, what does the amount of bores look like? The amount of bores looks like the integral of how many are entering, I'm going to put 0 to t, of the number of bores entering, e of t dt, minus the number of bores that are leaving, right? That kind of makes sense over a period of time. The number of bores that are leaving your community. So if I look at this thing, I need to come up with um, the a prime of t. Now this goes back to, oh wait a minute, these are x's. Are, are they x's or are they t's? What time t? Let me do this to this thing, just for, for the, uh, this should be, let me put this as an x. These are x's. And I'm doing this on purpose because remember when we had these, uh, were these right around when we were talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus? I believe so. So I have to take and think and put in my x value. So if I think of, and this is a little bit goofy, but a prime of t would be equal to, if I take the integral of this, it's going to be e of x 
Or maybe I want it the other way around. My bad. Uh, anyway, let me just let me finish it out with X's or T's here. Um, I want this to be an X. Sorry about that, guys. I want this to be an X and this to be a T. I'm just trying to make this as... as mathematically correct as I can, which makes these T's. And so I want to know when this equals zero, right? Because it's going to be, if I'm looking for a maximum, I am looking for when that equals zero. So what I'm going to do is go to my calculator and think about this. If I have E of T minus L of T, how many enter, how many leave, when does that equal zero? All I need to do is go to my calculator and set them equal to one another and solve. Again, this is in your calculator. You're not going to have to do that because that would be really miserable with all these uh, exponential and trig functions all mixed together. So go to solve in your calculator. Have it be your friend. It's going to come up with a 6.8812. You can use solve. The other thing you could do too is graph them both and find out where they intersect. That would give you that same uh, t value there. But that doesn't mean that this is the final best answer because guess what? They gave you boundaries up here. So this is one where you have to test. You're going to have T and you're going to have A of T. So you have uh, the first boundary is at 0 and then you've got another boundary at 8 that could be the maximum higher than what this T value is that you have here of 6.8812. So you go to your handy dandy calculator, you calculate these out. This is a zero. This is 1194.144 and eight is 896.214. And so yes, lo and behold, it does turn out that your maximum is this coordinate right here. But you do need to go back in and check your endpoints to make sure that you really got it. But therefore, and this is the greatest number of bores, the greatest number of bores, the greatest number of bores in the community is at t equals 6.8812, and we are in years. So it hits its peak at 6.8812 years, that population. All right, D, last one. This is it. What, what, what is the rate, was the, sorry, let me try again. Was the rate of change in the number of boards in the community increasing or decreasing in 2015? Well, you need to know what E prime of 5 would be, right, rate of change of the amount entering and subtract away the rate of change of the amount leaving in the fifth year. And so again, you're going to go to your calculator. You're going to calculate those derivatives, plug in the 5, evaluate it at 5. That's going to give you a negative 33.206. So because this is a negative number, was it increasing or decreasing? And we say, therefore, decreasing. Did they sell it? Yeah, explain your reasoning. Decreasing at t equals 5 because e prime of 5 minus l prime of 5 is less than 0. There you go. Now you can see me better. It's negative. Decreasing. All right. That takes care of section 8.3. I will see you in class. Shoot me an email if you've got questions. Hang in there. We are almost done.